Hello and welcome to the VCSP Tech Hub. My name is Brandon McCoy, Senior System Engineer at Veeam Software, and today's video is going to focus on managing your customers' Veeam Backup and Replication servers from the Veeam Service Provider console. This should be a very short video, and we're going to jump straight into it. So let's go right into the lab. So here I am at one of my customers' locations. I have Veeam Backup and Replication installed, and the first thing I need to do is connect their Veeam server to my Cloud Connect and also allow that connection to show up in the Service Provider Console. So I've already created a tenant inside of the Service Provider Console with a username and password, any kind of backup resources, uh, replica resources that I'd like to give them. And now I'm going to come into the Backup Infrastructure tab, the Service Provider tab, and I'm going to add the Service Provider credentials into their Veeam server so that they will show up. Here I'm just going to edit an existing one that I've already created. I'm going to type in the IP or DNS of the cloud gateway and then I'm going to check this box right here. Now the checking of this box is actually what allows the Veeam server to show up in the service provider console. This is going to install the management agent on the customer's Veeam server and I'll show you that as soon as we're finished here. But I've entered in the uh, DNS of my cloud gateway. I've checked the box. I'm going to click next. We're going to verify that the SSL certificate on the cloud gateway is good. And we're going to add the username and password for the tenant, which I've already done here. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click apply. Okay, it's going to show us the available resources for Cloud Connect, uh, any kind of replication. I'm just going to kind of next, next, finish through here. Now, once this is done, you'll see right here, updating remote management settings. That is the management agent that is being installed on the server. And we'll click finish. And just to verify that, if I search in our programs for Veeam, I'll see the management agent icon here. I like to refer to this as the blue fidget spinner. <laughs> so if I double click that and then I open the taskbar, I can see the Veeam management agent is initializing and it is verifying the cloud gateway and it is also verifying the username and password that I gave for that specific tenant. Once I get a green checkbox, I know that not only is my Veeam server connected to my cloud connect, but it is also connected to the service provider console where I can begin those management operations. Okay, looks like we got a green check here. So we'll go ahead and close all this out and we're gonna head right on over to the Veeam service provider console. All right, so here we are at the Veeam service provider console. And if I want to verify that my Veeam server has been added correctly, I can come down to this discovery tab here and I can come to Discovered Backup Servers, and I should see the Veeam server that has been added. As we can see here, it is healthy. It's checking into the Service Provider Console, and we're going to come back to the screen in a few to show some additional options you can do from here, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start here at just the management interface. So for the management of our backup jobs, if I toggle over to virtual machines, we'll see two types of workloads that Veeam Backup and Replication protects that can be shown within the console. That's going to be your virtual infrastructure, which is VMware and Hyper-V, as well as public clouds. Now, just a quick note on the public clouds, Veeam does offer native backups for uh, AWS and Azure that currently integrate with this console. So now Veeam Backup for Azure and Veeam Backup for AWS are separate products. And on their own, they do not integrate with the Service Provider Console. However, you can tie in Veeam Backup for Azure AWS workloads to an instance of Veeam Backup and Replication 10A or later, and then tie in that Veeam Backup and Replication instance to the console, and it will relay that information for you. So we see here the Azure and AWS workloads, success, failure, and that's all being given to us because those workloads are also integrated with an instance of backup and replication. For the on-prem environments, your VMware Hyper-V, that's going to be under the virtual infrastructure tab. We can see the success, the warnings, the failures, 
I can click on these failures and I can get a little more information into why those uh, jobs failed. I can also download logs for one of these servers if I want to get even more in depth and really try to troubleshoot why a job has failed. Other things I can see from the jobs, uh, I can see whether this is a local job or an offsite job, if I'd like to toggle specific jobs. I can also toggle information if I want to get more or less statistics of the job that we see here. Now in terms of management, there's light job management here. I'll be honest, all the heavy lifting will need to be done from the Veeam server itself. Uh, in terms of adding new virtual machines to the job, editing the schedule of the job, changing the location of where the jobs are going. But I could, for instance, click on a job and start it. I could go to a failed job and I could retry, or if it's to say, you know, I could disable a job, any of those types of things. Um, those are some of the light job management activities that you can do from this section. Now, if I'd like to get a little more uh, granular in terms of my visibility, because keep in mind, this is just showing the job as a whole. There could be multiple virtual machines in one job. So if I come down to this protected data, I can actually drill down into every VM, whether it's the public cloud workloads or the VMware Hyper-V, and I can get more information on that specific virtual machine. This can be very helpful for your SLAs I can click here under backups and see that this machine, this machine actually has two separate jobs. I can see the size of those backups, how many restore points they have. I can click on this restore point and see the source size of that backup. Now the reason we don't see anything here under backup data is because I'm doing a job with multiple VMs in one job and it is producing one Veeam backup file. So we're seeing the size of that file. If I were to enable per VM backups, I would see the individual backup data because every virtual machine would be its own individual file. In either case, I can see the restore point size of this backup file here. Now, like I said, I did want to come back down to this discovery tab here and show you some additional actions that you can do. So I'm under discovered backup servers here. This is the customer Veeam server we added in at the beginning. And as you see here, there's these server actions. So if I click here, we get a drop down. I can, for instance, set location. Maybe this customer has multiple locations. So which Veeam server is this location at, right? I can change those here. I can also apply patches. While we're not able to push full installations or even full upgrades of the Veeam software from here, I can do some of these small hot fixes and cumulative patches directly from here, which is really nice. Um, I can restart the backup services, just the Veeam services, or I can actually reboot the whole machine itself. And another option to download the logs from here as well. So that's going to be it for managing and having visibility into your Veeam backup and replication servers through the Veeam Service Provider Console. Hope this video was informative. As always, appreciate your time and have a great one. We'll see you next time.